A few weeks ago, I started this new sketchbook with a specific goal in mind. It's all about developing my own art style and ideas for paintings instead of just practice sketches or studies. But there's a big step between the sketch and the final painting, no matter what media you use, and often I stumble right there and then. If you've ever struggled with turning your ideas and sketches into finished paintings, or you find tackling larger pieces scary in general, I hope the process in this video can inspire you, as I'm going through the exact same thing. A painting is a commitment. It takes time and passion and energy, and if you're a slow artist like me, or maybe paint on large formats or in a very detailed art style, that only gets more intense. So this time for these sketches, for the theme ephemeral, I want to take that step from sketchbook to painting with care. I want to give myself the space to explore and make mistakes and learn along the way, see if the materials I want to use work as intended, and if the color palette I imagine translates well. Let's start painting. I'd ordered this tiny cradled panel and something about the beautiful edges and smooth surface made me want to use it immediately, so luckily the first page in my sketchbook gave me the perfect base. With this square format composition sketch here, a spiral galaxy framing the portrait like a halo and her hand reaching up to a small flame made from gold leaf. As I want the large painting to be done on the same type of panel, this is a great way of testing brushes, how the surface interacts with the paint, and especially if the metal leaf embellishment holds up. If you want to paint on canvas, use a tiny canvas panel for your miniatures. This is all about getting familiar with the materials, no matter what they are. I started with a simple sketch in charcoal and graphite, just to make sure everything I wanted, the hand, the face, the galaxy, the flame, fit onto the panel. I then used the fixative spray to seal the sketch. This is transparent gesso, which I'll use as an additional layer of sealant. While these gesso panels are wonderfully smooth, I do like to have a hint of texture and more absorbency, so I do add my own layers of gesso on top. Using my new transparent gesso will leave the sketch visible, and the fixative spray from earlier keeps the lines from smudging as I apply it. I'll have to seal the gold leaf first before starting to paint over parts of it. It can stick to the transparent gesso, so it's better to wait a day between applying that and applying the gold leaf. That's a mistake I won't make on the larger version for sure. For this portrait series, I want to use space photography as inspiration for the backgrounds. I've always been fascinated by outer space. I read and watch a lot of science fiction and just love the sense of awe that overcomes me in the face of it all. The contrast of vast galaxies and nebula next to a simple portrait really appeals to me, and I talk more about the overall process of creating the layout sketches and exploring the concept in my sketchbook video. If you've seen some of the amazing space photography out there, the colors are incredibly vibrant. I want to take a different approach and push them into the opposite direction. I don't want the painting overall to be that saturated, but have the color shine through more muted, subtle grey tones. Especially since I usually oversaturate everything. So this tiny panel will be a miniature painting exploring that color palette and how to combine those colors with the gold embellishment. As you can see, I struggled with the face a lot. I've realized that I still lack in basic painting skills, and often I have to compensate for that by painting in multiple layers, slowly correcting mistakes, and approaching the painting with little baby steps. I plan on painting and sketching a lot more studies, especially of figures and portraits, to work on those weaknesses, 
but I also want to embrace my own art, even if it's imperfect, and the way to the finished painting can be an uphill climb. It can be paralyzing to just sketch and study all the time, waiting for the day when we are good enough to paint our visions. While studies of course help us get closer to that, I found that I learned so much more from actually, well, painting finished pieces, no matter the mistakes I make. 10 portrait sketches or master studies will teach me about sketching and shading, but a single painting that's my own creation teaches me so much more about my art process, my art style, and about the direction I want to take. If you ever feel stuck with sketches that you don't feel ready to translate into a larger painting yet, maybe give a miniature version like this a try. After painting that, you'll know what to practice next, instead of being stuck in an endless cycle of practice for an unclear goal. So yes, this painting process is far from ideal, I repaint a lot and the shading gets muddier than I'd like during the ugly stage in the middle, but I learned a lot about how to turn that around towards the end with clear brush strokes, more saturated colors to emphasize the lighting, and some sharp details to bring the blurry face into focus. It might look like a waste of time if you haven't tried this before, but for me, a miniature version is like a safe playground to explore an idea in. If it doesn't work out, I'll have spent an afternoon learning that lesson. If the gold leaf painted over by the acrylics looks bad, then this is where I want to find out, not on a much larger piece after spending weeks painting it. I'm curious, how long do your paintings take? I always feel like I'm slow, but that's mostly because I build up my paintings in layers and love to go with the flow, taking detours instead of always sticking to a plan. But mostly it depends on size. I've had paintings stand around for months as I slowly chip away at them over weekends or during late nights. Others I sketch one day and can finish the next. Lately a lot of my paintings were larger than A3 and pretty detailed, so this miniature was a breath of fresh air. I have to admit, I didn't finish it all in one sitting as the liquid gesso needed to dry. But just knowing that I could have done this all in one day felt wonderful. Now, small paintings come with their own challenges. Proportions are more difficult to keep precise, expressions are more difficult to capture, and of course there's less room for detail. But that can be incredibly freeing if you're a perfectionist, right?
This isn't a color study. Yes, it's a small painting I'm doing ahead of a larger one to be better prepared, but the color palette, the pose, the galaxy background are all different. If, like me, you're sometimes hesitant to dive into a painting because you don't feel ready yet, I encourage you to try and paint a series of connected pieces. As I was sketching ideas for this concept of outer space portraits, I got so into the different options and how I felt inspired to paint multiples. Instead of the intimidating one painting for this idea, I can explore the subject in a series, have it evolve over time and, hopefully, my painting skills will grow naturally during that process. So this miniature is a small first entry of a series, not just the preparation for a larger version of itself. I plan to use a variety of different formats, from small panels to, if I can find any, even round ones, always playing with those gold leaf elements, limited palettes, nebula and constellations, and the figure framed by them. And I'm so excited to see how the last in the series will compare to this first one. Pick an idea you like, that inspires you, and you've maybe even sketched before, and then just run with it. It being a part of a series means that you can always build upon that first painting, so there's no need to hesitate or get decision paralysis. I applied a quick isolation coat first to unify all the different textures and let that dry before varnishing. I also use this as an opportunity to test out varnish options. There are so many to choose from, especially if you paint in acrylics or oils. And at least for this small painting, I wanted to give the very shiny high gloss varnish by Liquitex a try. While I love the result for this miniature, especially how it contrasts with the even shinier gold leaf underneath. This test also showed me that for the larger version, I'd probably want to stick to satin or even a matte finish, as the high gloss finish can be a bit distracting from the art itself. This small original piece that went well beyond just the color study can now be found in my shop too, if you're looking for a very small addition to your collection of prints and artwork. I hope that no matter your art style, your medium of choice or your painting process, that this helped or inspired you in some way, showed that there can be a step between the sketch and the often intimidating painting just to dip your toes into. I'm incredibly excited to paint more in this series and might try and document some of those painting processes as well. Let me know if you'd like to see any of that. It's been so much fun to film this process so far, from the sketchbook page to the color study, and I want to thank you so much for watching. I wish you a happy painting and drawing time yourself, and I hope to see you in my next art video.